drop, man. <laughs> yeah, man, got the wake and bake dropping. I got you up on here now. You know, for maybe a maybe a future. Oh yeah, man, it was great. It was great. How, how, how was your holiday? It was good, man. It was real good. Got, got to see a lot of family. Ain't too much as always, but you know, everything good. Yeah, hey, you gotta eat good. You know what I'm saying? So we can get on that regimen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm, I'm about to get back on that regimen. I've been I've been pigging out since I came home. You know. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you know, hey, I said, you know what? I ain't gonna worry about it, man. I'ma eat eat all I can, you know, get it in, and then shit, we're gonna work on this. We're gonna work on it. Get back in the lab. I can tell you, bro, I put on like 40 pounds in two months when I first came home, and I won't I was in there for like a month, you know what I'm saying? But that was the first time I'd ever went. You know what I'm saying? In the system where, uh, you know, you can't just get up and go to the, the ice box stuff you want to, man. So, you know, that joint was a shock to my system. When I came home, I put it on like I, I was the happiest I've ever been in my life. I'm telling you, I probably put on 15, 20 easy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it ain't even been too much, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought I was eating uh, good. I, mean, I was eating, but it, 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 like you said, it ain't nothing like going to the ice box anytime you want, you know? Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Fuck yeah. What else been going on in the world? Oh man, just uh enjoying these dogs, man. Enjoying these dogs. I uh I had a uh I had a litter drop in March and uh and she only had four pups. I kept three of them and uh placed another one over at my mom's house, man, and man, they coming along great. Coming along great, man. It's uh it's um uh, you know, pretty much uh I had the mother I had the mother since she was a pup, and uh, just could never find could never find a dog that I wanted to put together with her or nothing. And uh, uh, finally found one from from, uh, from a macho buck bloodline, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. came out real nice, man. She was nine years old when she had these puppies, though. Oh wow! Okay, how many did you get? She had four. She had two boys, two girls. Okay, so she must have been in pretty good shape then. Man, she was in awesome shape. She was in awesome shape. You, you might see her on uh, Samurai Kittles has that uh, online obedience challenge coming up. Okay. So I entered, I entered her into it, man. And, you know, she barely got any gray hair on her face. And, you know, she, uh, I, I train dogs, you know, uh, I train pet dogs in, in clients' homes for a living. So I use her as my demo dog. So she's active and always doing something, man. But, uh, you know, that's, that's um, she just comes from, come from a really healthy, healthy bloodline and everything, man. Um. I got uh, I got her. Well, let me see. She is actually the, the fourth from the fourth that I ever bred. I started out in like 2005. Right. And uh, got some dogs from a, a uncle of mine who ended up getting locked up. So uh, I mean, I knew they were good dogs and everything like that, but I could get you no know, paperwork from them or nothing like that. So you know, I just was like, shit. That was my, that was my first uh, pit bulls I got, and uh, man, just just loved them. You know what I'm saying? Just absolutely loved them. And, and, and kept me going, and uh, you know, should, he should be home. Hopefully, he'll be home 2025. And okay. uh, I can't wait to, you know, I sent him some pictures and stuff like that here and there again. But I just can't wait to see see his face when he see what uh, you know, what I kept going for while he was gone. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's what's up, man. How long you been in the dogs? Uh, I, like I said, I got I got my first APPT um 2005. But uh, I've been I've been around hounds and uh, training dogs of all sorts since I was. Let me see, I've been really my whole life. I'm I'm 40 now, but I say you know, six seven years old. My earliest memories are actually getting out there hunting with my uncles and teaching the dogs to track and, and how to found prey and all that kind of stuff. Like I used to, uh, they would give me like either dead rabbits or, or like a uh, deer hide, and I'd have to drag it through the woods, drag it behind my bicycle and stuff like that. Would come back and. And let the beagles loose or and that kind of stuff, man. So that's where it started. And uh I won't even get a, a pit bull until I was, you know, an adult. I'm, you know, you know how you, you know how older people be, man. You can't have a pit bull, they turn on you and all this kind of stuff. And uh so you know, as soon as I could, that was the first 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 thing I got, man. I ain't turned back since. 
Oh yeah, nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. How long uh how long you been fucking with the Buck City channel? Man, uh 2019, I believe, bro. I believe it was like maybe maybe December, maybe November, December 2019. Like I said, man, you uh you, you helped me through some real rough times, brother. For real, for real. Like the pandemic was that one rough enough. My father, he passed away from cancer. Uh, December 2020. You know what I'm saying? So, right. man, I'm telling you, waking bakes and, and everything, man. My dad used to sit back and listen to him with me and stuff. Cause I mean, he, he just loved dogs of all types. That's really where I got my uh, really where I got my love for dogs from, man. But uh, oh yeah, for real, for real, dog. I don't know. I don't know how to, how to kept scratching without you, dog. Okay, so we we spreading across different age demographics then. Definitely. definitely. Okay. Yes, sir. My, my father was 63. Oh man. man, that's what's up, man. That's indeed. That's what's up. That's what I'm talking about. That's that impact that I'm that I be talking about on here. You know. And, and you, you know what I what, you know it sounds kind of cliche and whatnot, but I really think it, it it really boils down to real recognize real. You know what I'm saying? When people hear people hear you talking and, and, and the way you conduct yourself and everything else, man, it, it, it ain't nothing fake about you. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can you can really you can you can you can tell somebody's genuine with, about their love and, 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 and their you know, your passion for even sharing knowledge and stuff like that. Like that was the first thing that got me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like in any type of thing with dogs, like even in dog training, I've always tried to reach out to the OGs and and you know, learn different techniques and methods and all that kind of stuff. But everybody, everybody always kept anything they did with dogs like a, 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 a common, you know, a, a real tightly kept secret. They didn't want to share it with anybody or like that, man. So, right, right. You know, I first started listening to you and the shit you were sharing about, uh, you know, this animal husbandry and you know, uh, breeding techniques and stuff like that, man. It was just like, man, you was opening up a master class for anybody to listen to. You know what I'm saying? So I've always been really appreciative of that. Yeah, nah, man, that's. That's what I do it for, though. It's for the appreciation and and just to, you know, this is my therapy, too, you know. No doubt. I mean, people don't understand. I mean, mental health is, that's that's very important. So, you know, for you to be able to do something that you love doing and reaching out to people and, you know, the, the reciprocity, you know, they, they're reciprocating it, it back. You know what I'm saying? That, that shit's amazing, bro. Any any way I can help, you know, that's that's what I'm all about, man. Any way I can help, you know. Like, uh, how did you gain so much knowledge when it came to like, uh, you know, the, the breeding, genetics, and stuff like that? Was that like, you know, did you do like some, I guess, uh, some college courses or something on like, you know, genetics? Period, or you know what I'm saying? Like, to hear how you break it down and stuff like that, it's it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? I, never, I mean, my, I never, you know, I got I got my bookshelf is fat. You know, I got a lot of books and shit on genetics and shit but most of all just hands on you know yeah it's just straight up hands on and and honestly the the dog man that I was able to grow up around you know yeah it was it was amazing i mean you didn't you don't know how legendary these people are until you get older of course that's, that's right you know, but at a very young age, you know, I was around the best, you know, I was around, you know, people that, like I said, just the experiences in some of the yards that I've been to just, just on some kick it shit though. Like not even, you know, just, you know, like I done, I done clubbed and, you know, with some of the best dog men ever, you know, we done. We done and, kicked it. We done kicked it on that level you know, to where I, I was you know. About college courses, that education that you got, you can't pay for that. Nah, hell no. You know. You know. Yeah, nah. It's it's in it's embedded. It's like I don't even think about this shit no more. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's gotten to the point, you know, where you just put your hat on or put your sock on, like you're not thinking about what you're doing. You know. It's a different type of mindset. I feel you. You know, they got studies and stuff um, talking about, uh, you know, they did a study and they looked at your pupils, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll ask you a series of questions and shit. And based on 
the complexity of the question determine you know your pupils dilating and shit you know what I'm saying just like like some shit that you do just like driving in a straight line like you don't you're not thinking about that shit you know what I'm saying you're just your mind your mind's in autopilot it's just automatically doing that so when it comes to dogs with me that shit's autopilot you know Exactly, you know, so just beat it in and then with the pedigrees and shit, I had a partner, you know, he used to study a lot. That was back when internet first, you know, started, you know, coming to the houses and shit, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we in school and shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, I was running the streets. He was studying, you know, he kind of... Uh, like a kidney disease and shit so he couldn't run around no more and shit he was kind of stuck at the crib you know kidney dialysis every every now and then and and whatnot so he'll be a little little ill sometimes it couldn't come out but you know that was my partner and we'll always um hook up and call each other and whatnot i'll stop by you know what i'm saying and he'll tell me to come in and check out these pedigrees and shit, you know what I'm saying? And and back then, you know, as a teenager, that shit, it was like a foreign language and shit. You know, like, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? You gotta figure out a way to actually understand this shit, you know what I'm saying? There's people, there's people right now that, you know, they're looking at pedigrees today and, you know, they, they truly don't know what the fuck they're looking at. You know what I'm saying? It's, right. it's got a um, different type of heat wave about about the pedigree, you know? Um, you know, when you look at it, it's got, you know, it just look, it looks a lot different than when I first started looking at these pedigrees, you know? Right. And we talking about shit 30 years of fucking studying them and shit and you know right like i had guys that were obsessed with the the make and the development of dogs and shit you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. the the pedigree is important like you you hear people say uh, how the dog is bred and why do you care and you know you you, you hear all of this shit is it's because people are obsessed with greatness and and fucking you know what i'm saying it's just it's like uh you know it's like you probably got a partner that or maybe even you that l- love his car just to be super clean all the time you know what i'm saying it's just everybody's not like that so i'm not like that you know i don't i don't really give a fuck you know what i'm saying let me get up in this motherfucker undetected and, and slide slide around, you know what I'm saying, and check traps, you know what I'm saying? I mean, um, everybody got a different motivation in what moves them, you know? So, um, nah, I just was around some good motherfuckers. The importance of the pedigree to certain truth, for no other reason than when you're trying to reproduce and you're trying to improve something, that's your, that's the blueprint. You know what I'm saying? So if, it, if it's, you don't have that blueprint, it's hard to it's hard to know where you're going, where you came from. You know, you kind of lost in the sauce. I'm not saying it's impossible to do without it, but yeah, damn, it make it a whole lot easier when you do know what you're dealing with, so you know how to get back to point A to point B. Look for those traits that you're looking for. And, you know what I'm saying? Like that, 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 that's uh, that, that's you know, that's imperative that you have that that uh. Uh, the second video he did, we were talking about how they fudge, you know, some people fudge paperwork. It's like 
deal or nothing, no big deal or whatever else. And it's like, nah, dog, it is a big deal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. for real, for real. Like, you know, even even if you come down to trying to improve on something, let's say you got, you got a dog with, uh, you know, some type of skin allergies or, or something like that, you need to know where that came from so you can know not to add that back into your program. You know how to, you know, exactly. You got to know exactly where that came from. You know, there's a dog. Uh, I, know, man, Buck, I think if you break it up a little bit, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. You there? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you there. Yeah. Yeah, nah, there's certain dogs from certain lines. You know, I won't really put it out there because there ain't really uh, enough research right. to, to put on it. But there there's a dog out there in the community and when, when you get that dog in there and you get it tight enough them dog I'm telling you the vet and the vet don't know what it is man that dog would fucking drop bro Damn. them fuckers will die and, and you know like you said for, for vet that not know what it is and what's caused it that, that, you know what I'm saying that's some scary shit you know what I mean? And it's been it's called. been multiple from different sources. I I got the receipts, all that. You know, I got the receipt. The vet, you know, they don't know from both sides, two different sides of the country, and uh, then more that just popped up. And I've been I didn't say nothing, but I've been like suspicious about it. You know. Right. And uh, you know, you gotta watch out for that. You gotta watch out for that, cause some some of these bloods, no matter how famous they are, legendary, you know, it, it could look on paper, you know, somebody wasn't breeding for the right shit at the at right, at, right. at one point in time. That makes a huge difference. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying? If, uh, you know no matter how legendary they might look on paper, you you don't want to go adding that to. Uh, I'm gonna go add that to your mix. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know for me, man, health is health, temperament, and uh, you know, a working spirit, man. Those are the three things I want to build on. Right. So that's that health and that temperament ain't right, then that's it for me. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that, that makes my decision. Which is probably why it took me nine years to find the right dog to uh, run to my female, man. You know what I mean? I was real proud to say that. Uh, you know, she got uh, she got an uncle that just passed away last November, seventeen years old. Oh wow! You know, so I was like, damn. And I'm talking about you won't like creep, you know, just 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 barely hanging on. I mean, this dog was living, still playing, still playing fetch pretty regularly and everything. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that might be the longest I've heard, seventeen. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he was um maybe uh. Oh, you know what? I'm there. There was, I think, yeah, there was a little deadlift bitch that lived a long ass time. She did, but I don't know if it was 17 though. 17 still, still. Um, that's that's real long. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, like I said, I, and I, I'm a, I don't know if you ever get a chance to check out my my YouTube uh, channel. I ain't got a whole lot of stuff posted on there, but I got a picture of uh, a picture of him, uh, like a liver color. It's like a liver color, and uh, yeah, he still he was still playing fetch. He had lost his hair and shit like that, man. But other than that, man, I mean, like dog was in great health and wore a dog where I think. Uh, he, I mean, he never got to go to the vet. You know, he had a little straight to straps and stuff like that on him, man. But, you know, all the time we went to the vet was, you know, get that, uh, that three-year rabies every every three years or whatever else, man. But, uh, you know, it always took good care of him. I was so glad that I was, uh, so glad that I put, put that dog in their hands, man. And I was kind of hoping that I would get more, more pups out of this last year so I could put some dogs in their hands again. You know what I'm saying? Just because they did such an awesome job keeping that dog healthy and you know, just exercise them. Dude is a uh, construction, like a foreman on a construction site. So he would take the dogs to work with him every day. And dog just had an a, a active lifestyle. You know, and I think that really, I think that really contributes to how, how long you live. Right. 
No, that's definitely huge. You know, my partner had his his dogs, and he just keep a couple at a time. But you know, he walking them all the time, and you know, him and his girl, you know, at night, and just you know, just the dogs just enjoying each other, you know. And it was um, it was cool, man. It was cool. So what's your bloodline of choice, bro? Um, uh, so far, man, I, I really like uh, I really like Macho Buck, and uh, I, I like uh, Boudreau. Uh, yeah. That Macho Buck Boudreau. Active, active activity and just uh, one thing that was always been really important to me was like how they uh, how they respond to to uh people and stuff like that you know what i'm saying like not to say that not to say that uh you know no dog in either one of those bloodlines doesn't have any man biters or whatever else in there but uh for the most part man you know i i, I got a 22 year old son and a 13 year old daughter so ever since i've been in the dogs i've had kids you know what i mean of right. course i ain't no i ain't no fool i'm not gonna leave my child unsupervised around them or nothing like that man but just the uh the, the, the tenderness they would they would they would have with my kids. Like, when I'm out there messing around with them and shit, wrestling, they rough and tumble and everything else, man. But uh, as soon as a child or even, like, my grandmother and stuff before she passed away, it's almost like they had, they had this instinct to know that they have to deal with this, they have to deal with this person with a, a certain level of, uh, of care. You know what I mean? Like, that was uh, that was something I was really, really uh, amazed by. But that's not something that, that's not something that I, I even had a chance to train into or anything else. They just seemed to kind of already know you know, I can't, uh, I can't get so junky. I can't get so, you know what I'm saying? Like, for me, then, I come outside, and, you know, take, take everybody off the chain, get ready to clean the chain spots off and all that type of stuff, man. And I'm talking about they jumping. Oh, I mean, I'm 6'4", man. Them dogs would jump up there and like, like, kiss my chin. You know what I mean? But, uh, never had that problem with the kids. Even when, uh, like, we play fetch with them and, and tug of war and all that type of stuff, they wouldn't even take it out of their hand. Like, I, I, Hold a little tug toy and play tug with them. If the kid picked the ball up, put up us, no problems with the dogs trying to, you know, snatch anything out there, out their hands or whatnot, man. And I was just, uh, right, you know, that, that right. was something that was amazing to me because I know, I know that I didn't have my damn fingers. Yeah, yeah, me. some of them, yeah, man. And that's that's another reason why I like that, um, the flirt pole because yeah. it eliminates the uh close range with your hand uh playing and in, in contact and shit. True that. True that. I think I don't think that that's that's a good idea. I think that's how people are getting bit and shit, you know. And and, 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 and true enough it's an accident, but shit, we all know accident yeah. no accident. You still, you know, you still might be going to the hospital. Yeah, a dog a dog uh, you'll see something that he likes and you know he just wants to work. That's why that's why the, it's important for these dogs to be on chains and shit, you know? That's another, that would that would be another factor into why they they, they need to be on chains, you know? Yep. And, and, you know, I, I was, uh, I was blessed enough, man, just that I had some really good relationships with, uh, a lot of the veterinarians in our county that, um, our county opened up a new, a new, uh, uh, animal shelter. So when they started opening up the animal shelter, they had they got like a board of a board of supervisors for it, and uh, right. they elected me to be on the board of supervisors, which was like you know kind of like I felt like I was behind enemy lines a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just because you know how they do us, they do you know how they do us. But uh, it, it, it gave me a it gave me a chance to really uh have a little bit of an impact on uh on our county and. Out here, it's we, we, we super rural, man. So it's actually a, a, a English fox hunting club out here, and uh, they they ride horseback and they have literally 50, 60 hounds out at a time for hunting. And so, you know, I I really think that me reaching out to them and making making sure that they came to some of the different town meetings and stuff like that that really helped uh, that really helped us keep our tether, uh, you know, be able to tether our dogs still. Because I mean, they they had that on the chopping block. You know what right. I mean? Even when dogs being tethered outside, it's like, you know, we got, you know, not to be on a relationship, but at the same time, 
you know, these are affluent white people, and, and you know, if, if that's how they got to keep their hounds, then, you know, uh, what, what, what's good for them is good for us. You know what I mean? So I talked to a lot of the hunters, I talked to a lot of the, the fox hunters, and stuff like that, man, and uh, they showed up in force, you know, and uh, so thankfully, we, we still allowed to tether our dogs here, whereas there's three counties right around us that uh, the tether laws, they went into place two years ago. And I mean, I, I realize the fight ain't over. That's something we always have to, you know, keep our eyes on and stuff like that, man. But, you know, I, I talked to I talk to a lot of people and, and try to get them to see the importance of, you know, making sure that you, you get on those boards and, and you know, as, as much as I hate politics, as much as I hate, you know, sitting in meetings and all that type of shit, man, I know the importance of the nail. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to do it or, or we can't make no, we can't complain when, you know, we forced to, we forced to keep our dogs indoors knowing that the breed that we love, they not going to do well there. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's a fact. And what's yeah. real interesting is we don't have a we don't have like a, a leash law in Goosen County. The only time we have to keep our dogs tethered, leashed, or or in a you know in some type of enclosure or pen is between the, the times of April first to April first to May thirty first of every year, and that's just to make sure that the dogs aren't like running running freely and disturbing wildlife that's, you know, in birthing season. But we also have a kill on a kill on sight order, which means if you're my neighbor and my dog wanders over your house and he could be the friendliest, happiest puppy in the world or whatever else, no questions asked, you can shoot that dog, no no laws broken. I can't you know what I'm saying, that dog was on your property, so you had the right to kill it, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we got a we got a law where you know you know we're not required to keep our dogs tethered or leashed. But if you care about them at all, it, it behooves you to do so. Right, right. We feel real antiquated in that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, we just getting it in, man. Waking and baking, man. Waking and baking. Waking and baking. Check that one out hey, too. You, you, you say what? Hey, can you hear me, Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh yeah, I said, have you ever been to Virginia? Uh, I rode through there, but I didn't. Uh, it wasn't really no spots. I, I got you. was I really got you. stopping and shit. I, I, we came out to Seattle. Uh, 2019, man. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I was, I was hell-bent on trying to compete, but at the same time, that was like, you know, in the middle of the pandemic and all, you know what I'm saying? All that shit was going on, but yeah. I was like, man, I gotta get up. I'm all the way in goddamn Seattle. I gotta go see my boy Buck. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. For sure. Yeah, nah, Virginia. Oh, that's where you at. You, you out there. Virginia. I live in a, I live in a county called Goosen, Virginia. Oh, okay. And, you know, it's been, I grew up here and everything, man, so, you know, the first shit, what's changed over the last 20 years is amazing, man. The urban sprawl kind of coming in, so, like, it used to be, you know, it, we used to, our closest neighbors used to be a mile away from us. Now it's like, you know, you see a lot of suburbs popping up, people leaving from the city coming out there and stuff, so. Yeah. There's not as much, of. Uh, there's not as much space to, to bulldog like you want to or keep your dogs like you want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, it used to be a lot easier because, shit, you can, have, you can have 50 dogs and nobody, nobody, you know, could hear your dogs barking or whatever, and, you know, that far away from you. But now, you know, it's become a lot more close quarters and, you know, uh, got a lot more Karens wanting to complain about everything. And, you know, I, I, tripped, I tripped the first time I heard you. Use that term tree hugger. I said, man, that's the perfect, that's the perfect term. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. yeah. I, I, I see our society, man, like, on the one hand, being that, you know, I'm a professional dog trainer, the way that uh, society has, has, like, uplifted 
dogs and, and, and their places and that kind of stuff, it's good for business, of course. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, that, that's what keeps me going. You know, 30 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to feed my family or pay my bills off the training dogs because most dogs were outside. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, man, I'm, I'm the, you won't find a person that loves dogs more than me. But it's it's uh it's disheartening to see how many uh you know how much people care more about animals than than, than people and especially all people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, you know they. I don't know. I think it's some personal shit that they got with breeders and you know people that like these dogs. Yeah. It's like um. Even though they can't take them all home themselves, you know, they don't want you to have them. So they just, anything to get them out of your hands because they feel like we're the problem. And, um, you know, even the dogs that end up in the vet, like those dogs don't come from reputable breeders. And, you know, they, they it's not, that's not who's filling up the pound, the, the dog pound with the, with dogs, you know. Because, you know, it, it is rare as hell. I mean, rare as hell that you go to the pound and you see any purebred American pit bull terriers, number one. Right. And if you do see any purebred ones, they're not well-bred. You, you know what I mean? Right. They, yeah, they slip. You know, a few's going to slip through the cracks here and there. But for the most part, you're not going to see that. Right. Or, or, or any other breed of of some of quality of some shit that like people want their shit when you buy when you buy from a a, a quality breeder you want that dog and it, and if you don't want that dog you can easily call the breeder that you just gave three four thousand to or or whatever and he'll gladly take that motherfucker back that's right that's you right. see what i'm saying so yep. so those dogs they're not in the pound they're not you know, it's the bullshit mixed dogs, you know, all of this other shit that people are just out here winging it. And it's cool because I know that if I don't want this dog anymore, I could just take it to the Humane Society. Like the Humane, the Humane Society is enabling this type of function, this type of behavior. They are. So they're like, just dump them off. And, and, and then when yeah, they, just dump them off. You give people a cheap route to dump it off. Let's get this dog. Let's take this dog in for a hundred dollars. You know, or, or free. Let's take it home. If we don't like it, we could just get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. It's no no accountability. That, you said it, Buck. You said accountability. You know what I'm saying? Being being made to being made to stand on something. You know what I'm saying? Being made right. to understand that you're taking you take it in a life. You know what I'm saying? And and whether it's whether you paid a hundred dollars or ten thousand for it, you know what I'm saying? You you gotta be responsible for it. You know what I'm saying? Understanding that it, it, this is a this is an investment that you're making uh for possibly the next ten to fifteen years. You know, that that you know, oh uh, well, you know, he had an accident on the floor too many times, so we just gonna turn him over. You know what I mean? And, uh, but if you shut like down, if you shut down that option, that those low and free breeders, you know, guys, yep. I mean, because they fucking up the game, like you said, they they filling up the humane society, and those dogs are getting loose, biting the shit out of motherfuckers. Right. And, and everybody, so, gets, all of them get the label, get the label them as pit bulls, man. That that misidentification is what's fucking the game up. That's what that's it's where true. they come from. Yeah. Somebody gets I'm a dog. It breeds, you know. Yeah. They, everybody's a breeder, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's what his shit. Yeah. That's what his shit comes from. <laughs> yep. That's why everybody look at these dogs a certain way. This is where it comes from. It's amazing to me how many people have no idea what uh what a real American pit bull terrier is, man. You know what I'm saying? They'll see you out. They see you out walking your dog or whatever. But oh man, that's a beautiful dog. Uh, is he a, is he a pit mix? And I'd be like, yep, and just keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. You know, some people are truly interested. You can educate them on that. And, and this, this is what the breed is supposed to look like. And you can tell some people that their their uh, idea of one is 
not not to trash the bully or whatever, but that's what they think a pit bull is. And that's, you know what I'm saying? That's a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got love for, I got love for all breeds and mixed breeds or whatever else, but the problem lies for me when, when uh, their bad deeds get blamed on our breed, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm constantly finding myself in arguments and shit like that with, you know, with people about, oh no, bro, it's an umbrella term, pit bull. I said no, it's one breed right. that has the has the name pit bull. And that's the American pit bull terrier. Anything else, man? You know what I'm saying? You mislabeling it, and and you, you, our dogs take the blame for that shit. Well, see, American pit bull is is that's four words: American yep. pit bull terrier. You know, so when you put the when you put those two words together, pit bull. That's that's the other breed. Right, right. Right. No, people need to know that. Yeah. When you when you put those two together, that's the that's the other pit bull. Yeah. And and they'll tell you that because when they spell it, like you tell them, like, hey, what kind of dog is that? Pit bull. Be like, hey, write that down, spell that on a piece of paper. <laughs> And if they don't separate those two words, you know what it is. They automatically they not about this shit. You know. And, and you, you know one thing that uh, one thing that I I really really uh am enjoying on this journey though, man, is is continuously learning. You know that's that's one of the reasons that I I made my I made my name on uh on YouTube Student for Life. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you know. I was I was really well versed and read a lot of books and all that type of stuff, man. But it, you know, listen to listen to you know the Wake and Bakes and, and, and different shows and you know all types of you know uh, uh, lots of different channels and stuff, man. It just really it really really let me know like man, there's still so much to learn about this breed. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, even even from bloodline to bloodline, you look at so many differences and so many variances, and uh, you know it's it's one of the it's one of the few breeds left out here that's. That is uh is bred for function more so than than aesthetic. Right, I mean, right. Like said, uh, was it uh, born follows function? A lot, a lot of these breeds been destroyed. You know. Yeah. I mean, you got you yeah. got Labradors that ain't retrieving shit. You got, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like they're not, they, you know, they they've destroyed the the um. The working abilities and, and qualities of, of these dogs. They've destroyed it. And that's what they want to do with the pit bull. Yep. That's what they want to do with it. You know, that's the same that's the same thing they want to do with the American Pit Bull Terrier. And people don't understand it. They can do it in short order. Oh no, it's it's ha it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's happening. They're um because of the laws. You know, the, the laws eventually like it'll probably take a hundred years, you know. But if if we don't fight back and they keep rolling up on us, and just over the course of time, just like uh, when that when that Michael Vick shit happened, you know, um, what was that? Two thousand six, two thousand seven, some somewhere around there. Um, there was. There was people getting busted with dogs, but there was 10 times, 20 times more of those people that got out of the game. It was just because they didn't want the extra heat. They didn't, they, they understood how much heat that these dogs brought upon you. They understood that. They did. And they was like, Fuck that! I'm getting out. You yeah. know. And you know, I, I truly believe they they love they love those dogs more, probably just as much or more than we do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but like you said, man, it's just it's it's it's, it's rare, man. It's and, too much. You know, like I said, I take my hat off to you every time I speak your name, brother, because you know you 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 show true gameness within a human. You know, it was it was it was an easier route for you to take, and you you didn't. You see what I'm saying? Like you, you stood on everything that you stand for, man, and uh, and, and you know, paid the paid the highest price behind it. Your freedom, uh, you know, and, and everything, bro. But ain't none of that stopping you from getting back up. 
Ain't nothing. And I, I truly do believe in my heart of hearts, bro. Your channel is going to grow bigger than it ever would have. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I know we all got to go through something. And, and you know, I hate that you had to go through that, brother. But I, I do believe it's for a bigger purpose so that you can, you know what I'm saying, like galvanize the whole community and make them understand, like, hey, we, we got to take a stand here. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you, you set the example for us as far as, no, you don't just roll your shit up and, 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 and hand your dogs over. You know what I'm saying? You, you fight right. for it. You know what I mean? And, right. Uh, like I said, brother, I run it. I hey, you run it! <laughs> like they, like they, like are we playing spades? Are you, <laughs> you know, run wheels, run wheels. Yeah. You know, yeah. hey, and you know, I'm not trying to seem like the cockiest motherfucker. You know, you know, I, I definitely, you know, everything was, was strategically, you know, plotted out. You know, but. Hey man, after a while, man, you get you get tired of getting rolled over on, man. You know the po know. police. I feel like they they've had their run with me just in my youth. You know when I used to run around, they used to mistreat me, and yeah. and all the fu the fuckery that used to go on. You know I won't even mention it. You know what I'm saying? But in this day and age, it's like wait a minute, man. You know, I got kids and shit. You know, I got to stand for something, bro. You know, it's something that's bigger than the community. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. I you mean, know, like you know. It, at, at, the, at the base of it, it was man time, brother. At the base of it, it was man time. You stood on what it, what it, what it means to be a man. You know what I'm saying? And, right. And I can't say, you know what I'm saying, nobody knows what, what they're going to do until they're under that microscope. I can't honestly say that I would have I would have took the same ride you took. You know what I'm saying? So, right. all but I then, like, but then you gotta know. know it, also, you gotta know what's what was all involved in that ride too, though. Like, it, right. it's just bits and pieces, you know, that we know. Like, motherfuckers don't know what a motherfucker lost. Motherfuckers don't know shit. You see what I'm right. saying? So, or what 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 stakes were on the table? You know. Right. So, and, until we had that conversation, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You yeah. can't really make yeah. your assessment, man. You know, maybe it wasn't so rinky dink as you probably think. You know what I'm saying, or or whatever. You know, but you know it is what it is, man. You fall and you get back up, man. And for to take a blow like that and to still be, you know, in there, man. Come on, man. I couldn't be more blessed, and, and it showed real. It showed real friends. You know, I wasn't I wasn't ready for my blessing because I had fake motherfuckers around me, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was still it was still some weak links, you know, around me that that wasn't there for the for the betterment of the breed. You know what I'm saying? They were just in it for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you learn that and then you you know you sharpen up you know who who your true your true motherfuckers are you know it's right. like i wouldn't trade that for me to know who my tr my true brothers are today that i could call right now i wouldn't trade it for the 30 years i've been dogging or whatever wow. you know what i'm saying i wouldn't trade it you know because you will never you you sift through a billion motherfuckers before you find motherfuckers like this, I tell right, you. Right. You know? And, and you know, so, for real, for real, less is more when you got some solid ones, though. Right. You know? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just trying to keep it tight, keep it good. Do it affect anything like if you ever try to make like an audio book or anything out of, you know, what you went through? Yeah, but you know. I've been thinking about all that shit, but it's like, man, it would just be like a one chapter book because a motherfucker just getting started, man. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that shit would be so weak because the journey, we just putting our seatbelt on. You know what I'm saying? Like all that other shit, we, that was no seatbelt. You know? That was no seatbelt. That, they ain't seen nothing. That's, and that's what I be saying about the, the underestimating 
and, and the, the things that people do that humans do you know and and you don't know where where this guy peeks out we talk about this shit with these dogs all the time but but what about that human what's that threshold you know you're only tempted to quit when you're attached to the results of your effort you know so I, I ain't attached to shit it's mediocre at best whatever the fuck it is you know that's my attitude you know when I get up that's why I keep going you know cause it's nothing people might think I'm in a great position you know I think I don't have a hundred million yet you know that's this is my mindset it's a mindset You know, I want to say, I mean, just all my experience is just coming up, you know. Okay. I mean, that's where this comes from. You know, I got I got resilient parents, too. You know, I come from, like, an old-timer used to tell me I never realized what he was talking about till I got deep into these dogs. But he said, he told me I come from some good stock. <laughs> no, <that's right. laughs> he said, I come from some good stock. You know, he. I told him who my my grandparents were. I told him, you know, who I was. You know, he was like, "You come from some good stock." You know. And, 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 you know, I, I kind of, you know, I, it felt like a stupid question, but I was gonna ask you, like, do you think that's something you, you know, you either born with and you got it, or you think that's something that can be learned? You know what I'm saying? Like for real, for real though. You know what I'm saying? But but that makes sense. If you if you come from resilient people, you come from stand up people, then you know what I mean. Like it, it, it's in you. Yeah. No, it is. It is in, it's individuals because it, a lot of this shit is in you for you to even try to, to accomplish the shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So for the, the type of shit that you try to tackle, like some people, they successful as fuck, but they wouldn't try to tackle that. You see what I'm saying? So it's all on an individual basis. I think everybody got it. You just got to dig, dig deep and know like they say, when you talk to yourself, you're crazy. You know, I, I don't think so. You know, I don't think so. I think that that's how you, um, you know, figure shit out, you know. If you sharpen it up every day, within the ne- in five years, you're gonna be you're gonna be sharp, bro. You know, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a a, a, a five year plan. You know, you got to look at it like that. Like nothing nothing great is accomplished in in a month or two. You know. Like, if you're trying to do something great, you got to be talking about five years, 10, 20 years. You know, you got to be talking like that. So if you sharpen it up every single day, just like if you're doing push-ups, you're doing three, four hundred push-ups damn near every day. You know, shit, you're going to be straight. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You're doing it. You're doing this every day, year for years. Let's just say, three and a half years. You just that's what you do. And plus, you walk around and do everything else, and you know you eating right. But you're doing these three, four hundred, and that's not even like a thousand or, or two thousand or nothing. But it's it's uh, three, four hundred. That's enough. You see what I'm saying? So nah, man, I just try to sharpen up all the time, man. And I tell myself, man, just like even when you're going to perform small tasks or you're leaving the house to go to three, four different stores and, you know, drop the computer off, do, you know, whatever you're doing, 
You just got to tell yourself, man, like, like, man, get to it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a way, there's a way to do everything right or, or efficient, you know? Shit, I just say, man, just, I used to say, get in baller mode. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause you could, you could, you could find yourself kind of loafing around through life, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's important to to push yourself, mm-hmm. and whatever it is, a, a complete that shit, write that shit down. Yeah. Some people need to write. I think if people write shit down, that, that'll be like it's the the most basic, effective tool that you can do in a day. Right. Is prioritize and and write things down. And I won't even say prioritize because, you know, you might fuck around and lose motherfuckers, you know, when you when you start adding too many ingredients. But just write shit down, man. Right, right. And then like you said, at least at the, at least at the end of the day, you can see what you got to accomplish. Ex- you know exit off. X yeah. everything off that you do. Write 10 things down. This is what I do a lot. I don't do it all the time. But when I feel like I need to really get in gear... I write 10 things down on a piece of paper. I'll X off all the shit that I did and whatever I didn't X off, I'll write it on the, the next day with, and it'll be 10 things. Let's say I didn't do four things. So I put those four things on that list plus six more things. You know what I'm saying? And then after a while, you'll see shit on there and you'll be like, wait a minute. Let me do this shit because it been three days. I ain't did that shit. You know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And then at the end of the day, you you're accomplishing shit. Like you're not gonna go through a day and not check off no boxes. You know. Right. Right. And and a lot of times we could we could do that. You know, I've been there. I've seen people do that. I've seen people all the time. I've done that. You know, I I go through the whole day and. I, I mean, I didn't write anything down that day, but I, I don't think I was too productive. I wasn't productive at all, you know? Right. So. And, and like you said, and, and sometimes, you know, and, and I know like for me, I would kind of give myself, I would give myself a little excuse here or there. You know what I'm saying? And right. that's what I had to, uh, that's what I had to work on in 2023 is no excuses. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. regardless of what else is going on in life, shit still got to get done. Right. You know, I don't take no days off. Monday, and, and I look at it like this way, man. Like I, uh, I, I'm, I'm living my dream. I, I always wanted to be able to provide for my family and, and make a living doing what I love. That's been training dogs. You know what I'm saying? And so, even on my worst day, when I'm working with, you know, aggression cases or, or whatever it may be, that still beat. That still beats what I was doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can remember times I'm working at fucking Jiffy Lube or working in a damn fast food restaurant and shit and just missing my greatness, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I I, I, I got to wake up every day and realize, look, you got you living your dream, you got to push your shit to another level, you know what I'm saying, and continue to create goals for yourself, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, so right now, I, I'm training, I got my wife, she's a, she trains, she does, like, basic obedience and puppy work. So that I can focus on more like the aggression issues and behavior modification and that type of stuff, man. But uh, you know, I, I just I gotta keep pushing towards that mark. Nah, that's good, man. That's what's up. That's My son graduated thing. from college last May, and uh, you know, he said something to me that was that, that I, I, I didn't even realize. But he said, uh, he said, Dad, I really appreciate you teaching me. The, the trade of training dogs. He said, while all of my peers were, were you know, stressed out because they didn't have enough money or enough time while they were studying, I was able to get, like, four clients a month. And he said, you know, while they was working 40 hours a week or whatever they was working, I might be working eight hours a week. And I was straight. He said, if you think about it, it was rare that I had to call home and ask for money or, or anything. Oh, you know wow. Yeah, he's a genius. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he know. And, you know, he knows how to take those skills and, and transfer them, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, now he's working for the university that he graduated from Radford for cybersecurity, man. And it's just, uh, 
you know, it's just a blessing, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I always told him, you know, as a kid, I said, man, just, just, just try to find a way to, to make what you're passionate about your career. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you can't go wrong. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> he still got that skill set and that trade of, of training dogs that no matter where you at on this planet Earth, if there's people with dogs, you can always make a living, scratch out some type of living. If your industry take a fall or a hit or whatever else until they get back on the feet, you got something that, you know, can't nobody take from you. Yeah, no, that's what's up. That's what everybody need to know that, you know. Something to fall back on. You know, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, nah, trades are good, man. I think trades are are great. You know, to have just at least you know, one or two. Be, with everything with artificial intelligence and automation and all that type of shit, I always be thinking about like, you know, what what trades or what what careers might be taken over by you know uh, computers or, or machines and shit like that. And man, I don't, I I can't see no I can't see no artificial intelligence being able to train no dog. That's that's something so you know you, that's in your spirit. That's you know that's that's two beings oh, yeah. that are, are learning to communicate with one another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not cutting no hair either though. Yeah, you exactly, know. bro. Maybe. <laughs> 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 I damn sure ain't getting mad cut. <laughs> yeah, nah, about no artificial intelligence, huh? That's crazy. Yeah, because AI AI is definitely going to take over. Hell yeah. AI is def because I've been hearing a lot of shit that they've been able to do with this shit. It's amazing. And I'm definitely going to tap in, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm hearing that they're they're able to do a whole lot of shit. So I'm, I'm going to be tapping in and uh, seeing what's up with that. Because, I mean, right before our eyes, we're seeing another age this is a, another age approaching yeah. you know and we gotta be right there with it and I, I've been pretty cool I've been pretty good at staying with the times you know I'm not gonna lie I've been I've been cool yeah, yeah. at that I, I don't know but I think you're a little older than me you're a beast with the computer and shit yeah exactly I, I fuck with the computer a lot I fuck with the computer a lot and some people uh, oh, that, I, that I talk to they be they don't really yeah, I, fuck I don't, with it like you know, that. I don't, I, I don't, I ain't for sure that you older than me, but you know what I'm saying. Just by, uh, you know, you know, uh, when you carry yourself and everything, I, I expect, you to, I expect you to be an elder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm 44. Okay, cool, cool. Well, shit, you, yeah, you, you, you're a little older, but yeah, I you carry yourself like you're 55, bro. <laughs> for real, for real. And, and you know, a lot of that is, a lot of that is, well, just like we were speaking about earlier, the, the, the way you speak about genetics, breeding, that type of stuff like that, that ain't no shit that, that ain't no shit that I expect to hear from nobody who's nowhere near our age, like, right, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You're like, for real, for real. You sound like goddamn, you know, you sound like Tom Gordon on that motherfucker, for real, like, laying it out for him, man. <laughs> where, is, where is he located? That's on Bulldog Hill. Uh, you know, I, don't, I ain't never been there, but um, I think it's in the Carolinas, though. I got you. I got you. I ain't never been there. Had, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, a little pig roast or something? Yeah. But this past year, man, I heard uh, dudes over at Going Hard Kennels. They were talking about it. I was like, damn, how did I miss it? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that, nah, that's, a, that's a good event. That's a good event. Yeah, you know. It is. I just, I just wanna, I just wanna goddamn, you know, tighten up our community, man. Make, uh, make connections with, with those that can help us further what we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, what I'm saying, like I said, I'm a student for life, man. I, I, I can learn something from anybody. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, and I'm, yeah. I always got my ear open and my mind open to receive. You know what I mean? Like I'm, uh, as, as well versed as I am in, in dogs. Period. Man, I'm still learning something every day. And I thank God for the internet for that. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a I got a wall of books. You know what I'm saying? Like a whole library of dog books, breed books, all types of tra- dog training books, and all that type of stuff. But you know, we were still limited to how much information we could take in when everything was just in print. Whereas now, you you know you 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 a few clicks away from learning about the intricacies of anything. You know what I'm saying? So. If, if somebody is ignorant to a subject right now, it's, it's because either they ain't got no Wi-Fi or they choose to be ignorant. 
Right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of information going on. You know, a lot of information. Yeah, man. Let them know where they can find you, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you can check me out on Instagram at Front Door Dog Trainer. Uh, Front Door Dog Training, I'm sorry. Uh, and you can also check me out on my YouTube page, uh, Student for Life Dog Training. Um, I also got a Facebook page, Front Door Dog Training, as well. But, uh, yeah, that's where they can check me out. And, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, I definitely look forward to... Uh, you know, collabing with you some more, Buck, and uh, and I appreciate the time. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's always a pleasure, my brother. Yes, indeed.